very good morning students uh, in this particular lecture we are talking about our next animal which is ascaris lumbricoides now this ascaris it belongs to the phylum ascalmanthes so if we go by the classification very first of all then it belongs to the phylum ascalmanthes the class is Serenentia and the order is Ascaridida. So this is the classification of Ascaris. So students, as we all know that the Ascalmanthes, the phylum Ascalmanthes, it has got the round worms. So Ascaris is a very typical representative animal of this particular phylum. So this is a round worm which is present in the human body in the intestine as a parasite. So this is caris. It is a parasite to humans and to various other vertebrates also. So if we talk first of all about this particular phylum. So it is also called as nematelmanthes. So these worms are also called as nematodes, the round worms. Uh, this group of uh, animals, it includes the second largest number of the metazone forms. So it is a very big group having the round worms. So they are, they can be like free living or they can be parasitic also. So Ascalmanthes, it includes both free living and parasitic worms. As we are discussing about Ascaris lumbricoids, so this is a parasitic form of the animals or the Nematelman or the Ascalmanthes phylum. So the parasitic forms, it can occur both in plants and animals. So they may also parasitize the plants. So they exhibit a very little of the structural advancement over the platyhelminthes. So major of the systems, they are very much similar to the platyhelminthes. As we have got the excretory system, we have the same cells which are what called as the flame cells. They are the very same. So there are many other similarities also. Now, if we take some of the important features of this particular phylum, so first of all, they are unsegmented. So whole of the body of Ascaris or a typical nematode will be unsegmented. So there is no segmentation. Either it is, uh, uh, neither it is seen on the top, on the upper surface, neither it is, uh, nor it is on the inner side of the bone. So we have unsegmented body they are bilaterally symmetrical. So there is a bilateral symmetry. So if we cut in a longitudinal section of this worm, we have got two equal parts of the body. And they are round in the cross section. That means if you cut a TS of the body from any place, they are round in the TS. So this is a typical feature of nematodes. Now, as we have earlier discussed in Fasciola hepatica also, or you can say the tinea solium. So here the body is triploblastic. Triploblastic means they have got three germ layers. So body is generally covered with a thick cuticle. So here we have a thick cuticle over the whole of the body of Ascaris. So it helps in the you can say a lubrication in case of the host and secondly they have got a particular body membrane which is present outside the body and that also helps to prevent the lysis of this animal in the host so it helps to uh, you can say protect the animal from the lytic juices of the host now, if we talk about the elementary canal, 
so they have got a very distinct mouth and a distinct anus so there is some difference in the male and the female as we have uh, previously discussed in uh, the fasciola hepatica or we have taken the tinea solium in the very previous phylum as platyhelminthes so those were hermaphrodite animals as both the male and the female organs were present in the same individual so that was the prior case but in case of ascaris we have got different sexual forms we have got males and females so that means there is sexual dimorphism so sexual dimorphism means sexually males and females can be identified through morphological features so by seeing them you can say that this is a male and this is a female so this is sexual dimorphism so the nematodes or the round worms they are showing sexual dimorphism if we go further the muscular system of ascaris is well developed and the blood vascular system is altogether absent so there is no particular blood vascular system in case of ascaris or nematodes because it has got a silomic cavity inside it so this cavity is filled with silomic fluid so whole of the transport in these in this ascaris is due to that silomic fluid and there is no need felt to make a complete circulatory system but in the coming phyla we will see that there is a formation of complete circulatory system in the coming animals like in the next phylum we have a circulatory system but here in ascaris it is completely absent now if we go for the excretory systems again it is very similar to the tinea solium so they have got lateral canals which are opening anteriorly by a single pore so we will be taking on later the excretory system but here we are only and only concerned with the morphology of ascaris so in this particular lecture we are talking about the external features of ascaris lumbricoides now students first of all the ascaris is the largest nematode parasitizing the human intestine so here in the diagrams you can very well see uh, these are very similar to the noodles that we eat so sometimes you may have seen some videos uh, in which uh, a person is being uh, operated upon to extract those ascarises so so these are the largest nematodes which parasitize the human and secondly the ascaris lumbricoides is an intestinal worm found in the small intestine of man so you should be very clear that ascaris is present in the intestine of man and in the previous lectures in the previous animal rather i should say the tinea there was a case that tinea was also present in the intestine the tape worm but it was one in number so one human will have a single tinea in the intestine which can go up to 5 meters length but here in ascaris you may have hundreds of ascaris in single human so in the the picture you can see these are the extracted ascaris from a single human intestine now they are more common in the children than in adult so this is because the children are unaware about the sanitary conditions so they may get this ascaris so the disease that you get after having this animal is ascariasis if you have tinea you have tiniasis if you have fasciola you have fasciolasis so if you have ascaris you have ascariasis so as many as near to 5000 adult worms they may inhabit a single host 
So just imagine if you have 5000 ascaris in your intestine. So that is a complete I think blockage of the intestine. So uh, you should be very well aware about the life cycle of this particular parasite and how to get rid. You should know the precautions to get rid of this particular animal. Now students, the common name is the giant intestinal roundworm. The disease it causes, it is ascariasis. The host is the human. The location, it will be the small intestine. So larva, it may go into the lungs for its growth. So that is, uh, that will be taken in the later lectures. So the infective stage is the ovum. Now if we talk about the characteristics of female and male ascaris, as we have discussed earlier that we have got male and female here which are separate and uh, one thing should be noted that there are two or three major differences in between male and female ascaris. Number one. The female is longer than the male. So if you see this is a male and this is a female. So female is longer than male. So the average size is 200 to 350 mm. And the color is ivory or you can say reddish or uh, pinkish red. The posterior end is straight. Now this is the second difference. The female is longer and is straight. But the male as you can see in the diagram, it is curved from the hind end. So as you can see the curve, so this is a curved male, but the female is straight. Now here the spicules they are absent. I will be telling you what are spicules and the papillae they are also absent. Now if we see the male, it is 150 to 200 mm in length, so it is also reddish pink and the posterior end is curved. Now spicules, these are the genital spicules which are present in the males only. These spicules they are helping in the copulation process. When the sperm exchange takes place, the male uses these spicules to hold up the female. Now the papillae, they are also present in the male and they are absent in the female. So we will be seeing in the later slides that what are spicules and how they are present and what are papillae and what is the arrangement of the papillae in the male. Now students, uh, this is some part about the geography. So there is a high prevalence in the underdeveloped countries. So if you have more of the unhygienic conditions more you will be exposed to this ascaris. Now coming back to the morphology, you can very well see the difference in male and female ascaris. So if you see this particular diagram, the hind end of the male, hind end means the posterior end, it is curved, whereas the female is straight. So first of all, it is elongated, it is cylindrical, and it is tapering at both the ends. So from the center it is quite thick and from both the sides it tapers. Now the second thing is that sexes are separate. So you have male and a female. So the female is longer than male that was discussed earlier. The male is smaller being 15 to 30 centimeters and 2 to 4 mm in diameter. So the posterior end of the male is curved. Now we are talking about the mouth parts of the ascaris first of all. So students, the mouth opens at the very anterior end. So mouth is at the anterior side. It is surrounded by three lips. So this is very very important to note that there is a presence of three lips. These are not two, these are three. So in the diagram you can very well see the lips. Now the lips are, how they are present? 
one is a dorsal and two are ventrolateral lips so here in this diagram if you see this particular lip this is the dorsal lip so dorsal means it is present in the dorsal side upwards and two are these are the ventrolateral lips ventro it refers to the ventral side and lateral means the lateral sides so what is ventrolateral so they are neither ventral they are nor lateral they are in between the ventral and the lateral side on the both sides so these are ventrolateral so these are three in number if we go further these lips they bear sensory structures called the labial papillae now they have got the labial papillae now what type of labial papillae are present we are taking them now one by one the dorsal lip has got two double papillae this is very important to note that this dorsal lip has got two double papillae now coming to the ventrolateral lips now this lip has got one double sensory papilla so every ventrolateral lip has got one double sensory papilla whereas the dorsal lip had two double papillae now the ventrolateral lip it also bears the amphidial gland so this is a very very important thing amphidial gland is a chemo receptor and this gland it opens outside on the ventrolateral lip so the opening is also called as amphid a m p h i d so if we we are we are taking these ventrolateral lips what they have these have a one one double papilla a one one single papilla and a one one amphid so this is the case of ventrolateral lips and if we talk about the dorsal lip it has got two double papillae so this is the arrangement of the papillae on the lips of the ascaris so i think you are very much clear about the mouth parts of the ascaris in this diagram you can very well see again the dorsal lip and the two ventrolateral lips so the dorsal lip has got two double papillae if we come to the ventrolateral lips it has got a single double papilla a single single papilla and a single amphid on both the lips so that was the arrangement of the papillae on the lips of ascaris now students if we go by the external morphology of male and female ascaris there are some differences in the two so the two major differences that we have discussed earlier was that the size of the male was smaller than the female and secondly the hind end of the male is curved and female is straight now if we go first of all by the body parts so the mouth is present on the tips in both male and female so there is no difference in the presence of mouth now if we go for the second pore this is the excretory pore so you have found excretory pores at the very hind end of the animals but this is a very uh, exceptional animal in which you have the excretory pore which is behind the mouth now why this excretory pore is behind the mouth we will be taking in the coming slides when we'll be discussing the excretory system now the next difference is that in the female we have a gonopore it is very close to the center of the body but it is not exactly in the center it is somewhat towards the mouth so this is the gonopore 
but in case of male there is no gonopore as such so this is a difference males they lack gonopore and females they have the gonopore near to the center now the question is that where is the gonopore of the male actually the gonopore is opening at this cloacal aperture so that's why the male is not having the gonopore okay coming to the next difference the female it has got an anus at the very end but the male has got the cloaca so this is again a difference so why it is cloaca or if we consider the cloacal aperture into account now what is cloaca cloaca is a common opening for the gonopore and the anus so that's why the male had no gonopore as this particular gonopore in the female it is opening in the center but in the male it is opening in the cloaca and the anus is also opening at the cloaca so that means two systems are opening at cloaca in male now what are the two systems number 1 it is the digestive system that means end pore will be the anus second it is the reproductive system it is also opening at cloaca so that means the cloacal aperture is a common aperture for digestive and the reproductive system so this is a big difference so you should note this particular difference now students in this slide will be talking about the genital papillae of the male ascaris now as we have discussed in the earlier slides that the female ascaris it lacks the genital papillae but the male has the genital papillae so there are 55 pairs of genital papillae in case of male ascaris so they are all together absent in the female now students if i draw one hind end of the male ascaris so we have what we have this is the cloaca so this is the cloacal aperture which is which is opening in the very center so this is the male and this is the ventral side so you should emphasize on this point that this i am showing you the ventral side of the male ascaris now if i take account of the genital papillae what we have we have 50 pairs of papillae just like this these are the papillae i have made four pairs right now but these are going upwards and they are these are 50 pairs of papillae so they are called as pre anal papillae because they are before the cloaca so they are referred to as the pre anal papillae so you can note this particular thing in your copy so 50 pairs are pre anal papillae now after the cloaca we have got five pairs now how they are present first of all we have a double papilla these are the double papillae again we have got a double papilla so we have got two pairs of double papillae then we have three pairs of single papillae so this is the arrangement of the papillae which are after the cloaca so they are referred to as all these papillae they are referred to as the post anal papillae post anal means they are after the cloaca so 
on the top we have the pre anal papillae then we have the post anal papillae so in total the ascaris has got 50 pairs of pre anal papillae and 5 pairs of post anal papillae and out of these 5 pairs of post anal papillae first 2 pairs are double papillae 3 pairs are single papillae so that was the arrangement of the genital papilla on the hind end of the male ascaris.